Um, my name is Jay Williams and I'm from Birmingham. Um, yeah, growing up in Birmingham as it's a city definitely like influenced what I do today. I think um, if I wasn't from Birmingham then maybe, or a smaller city, I can't say that I would be involved in like streetwear today, so yeah. I've always been into clothes, not fashion as such, but I've always had a, like since I was about mm, 17, I've had a keen eye for like streetwear and I've always liked clothes, just like the idea of like looking fresh and so yeah, man, you could say I've always been into clothes. The first steps, it was just an idea. So I remember when I first decided that I wanted to do it, I went to the pound shop and I was just brainstorming really. So brainstorming and then like figuring out how you actually start a t-shirt brand. So I had to do a bit of research, found out that you need to screen print t-shirts. So then it was about finding out who can screen print t-shirts in Birmingham and just making phone calls and just getting quotes and stuff really so yeah man that was it. yeah so the name Hoodrich is actually a, an American term so a lot of American rappers used to say it like on their tracks and so I've known about the word Hoodrich for some time now but then one day like I decided to actually use the Urban Dictionary and find out exactly what it meant and the meaning it related to me it was just like someone who has nice things but doesn't really like plan for the future and doesn't really save any money so I was like oh you know what in a way that actually relates to me because I was just 20 I wasn't really doing anything I was just spending all my money on stupid stuff so I thought I'm gonna use this name and I'm just gonna try and make something of myself so my interpretation of Hoodrich now is like from nothing to something just being hood being somewhere where you are and then rich being somewhere where, where you want to get to so it's just about that transition man and just putting in work and just having a vision to get to where you need to get to in life so yeah man that's where it comes from the first two t-shirts that i made were just a white t-shirt black t-shirt and just screen printed um so yeah nothing too crazy just black and white t-shirt with um the logo screen printed but as time's gone on, I've changed the logo. So yeah, man, those were the original OG pieces. So initially I started Hoodrich with 200 pound and I bought 30 t-shirts and then I sold those 30 t-shirts for 20 pound each. So I made 600 and then I just literally pushed that back into hoodies. And then from that, I just kept flipping it. And then obviously to expand and to get more product, I pushed some of my own money in from like work and stuff but yeah that's how like the first three drops like came like it was started with 200 and then I just kept just flipping and flipping and then I added some of my own money and when I wanted to just boom, make it get bigger the first 30 tees were just sold through I did have Instagram at the time but there was no website as of yet so it was just through word of mouth man and me driving around and dropping stuff off so you have to kind of big up the people that bought the first t-shirts man because if it wasn't for them i wouldn't have got off the ground so i'm forever grateful for that definitely uh studied media so yeah man i went to south birmingham college and i did media level three didn't end up using none of it well mm, yeah didn't use it to be fair but it was all right didn't have no business experience just had like a vision and a burning desire to make something of myself man and just literally just prove to myself that i can become something do you know what i mean and just and just work hard at something that i enjoy so that's it so when i um I've done it with different things like shorts, t-shirts, but when anyone who's starting a brand, like some of the early stages, you have to be, you have to be willing to get stuck in and pretty much do whatever it takes. So I've had to buy t-shirts, cut the labels out, relabel them, do you know what I mean? Like make them my own. 
because I didn't have the means to go to a big manufacturer and get everything made from scratch. So it's just about using what you've got and just using your initiative, man, and just hustling. So yeah, I've been there and I've, I've definitely done that. Um, so the crazy thing is with Foot Asylum, one day I was checking my DMs on the Hoodrich Instagram and I got a DM from uh, the Foot Asylum buyer. Um, and then as I was scrolling, I realized he'd sent me a message a couple months before, basically saying we've been, we've had our eye on Hoodrich for a little while. We love what you're doing. Is there any way we can set up a meeting to look at some products and potentially get you stuck in the stores? So I was like, okay, cool, man. Um, yeah, yeah, let's do it. Let's set up a meeting, got on the phone, took some samples down to the HQ, had a meeting with, um, like the head buyer and the, the junior buyer and they loved the product and they just literally said they want it uh, to be stocked in stores so we just went from there really and yeah man it goes in stores and hopefully it does it does well and it's the start of something big Mad. we're in for asylum boring right now um it's the launch of the Hoodridge collection officially goes in 20 stores today all around the UK man so yeah hopefully it's a good day and it gets a good reaction uh, nervous excited but do you know what I put a lot of hard work in to get to this position so well to get the brand to this point so yeah man we're just gonna see how it goes and just stay positive Like this is where it first started, do you know what I mean? That's in um, my back garden with my brother, do you know what I mean? They were the first tees, so it's... Dave's going to the London store, innit? Oh, yeah, yeah, man. See, that's where it started, man. So then from there, that was just some artwork. I was just getting loads of old photos, man. Do you know what I mean? Old stuff. So it's just a bit mad to see it all, do you know what I mean? So yeah. Man. Yeah, so I've got, for the first three and a half years, I did Hoodrich all on my own. And it's kind of like, you get to a point where when you're doing something on your own, you can only take it so far. So I had this big vision, but it was just me, one, doing everything from marketing to the logistics, the business side, running Instagram, picking and packing orders, collecting stock. So yeah, and at the time I didn't mind doing that at all and I was putting in the ground, like just the groundwork. But then to take something to the next level, you do need a team and I was approached. Um, I now have business partners and I now have a team. So yeah, and I've re since getting, since having a team, I've realized the importance of it and it's the backbone to it's the backbone if you want to have like a successful company. Teamwork is just so important. So without that, you, you can't get far. So yeah. I've done UK Design Expo. That was my fourth time. So what it is, it's just a platform where independent streetwear brands can come and showcase their collection. And I've always been a believer of you need if you've got a product you need to put it in front of strangers and see if it sells so what ukd does is it gives you just like i said it gives you that platform for strangers to come in have a look at your product and then you can get feedback you can see if it sells you can see what styles work well so yeah man um big up ukd they've been a big part of the journey in terms of getting hoodrich out there in birmingham yeah, man. London will get one, two, three shots. Yeah, they've got, yeah, London will get ten lines of it. So this is what's coming into it. What did they not put out? They didn't put out that hoodie. You know the one? The one, man, where it's grey. The one that I said that one that you saw. People that have been buying will know it's like a like a, like an increase in quality and stuff. Do you know what I mean? And like we've got a lot more like cut and sew stuff like out now. So yeah, man. Do you know what I mean? I'm, 
Yeah, yeah, so like, we've got all this. We've got the pocket on there. So yeah, man. Nah, not doing the catch. So yeah, man. See? I went from nothing to something and still in Still getting on a bus and a train. Still living in the same old place and still think of every breath I see. We're going to the fort now. Um, just come from Boring. They just put the collection out. It's looking good, man. Um, obviously, we was there very early and for asylum changed the day. So I don't know how many people actually know. So it's going to be good because engage it from complete strangers going into the store. But yeah, man, we're going to the fort now. We're going to see how they've set the shop. But yeah, man, just take more photos and just see what the product's looking like in the store. And then we're going to get some food, man, and then um yeah so back in i think i first started gifting rappers in 2015 yeah um gifting gifting is um an important part of running a clothing company so i call it like influencer marketing so the rappers that like I like and I can visualize them representing the brand good. Yeah, I'll reach out to them um, and say, look, man, we've got some bits. It'd be cool to see you wearing it. And from that, I've had the likes of, I've had a few people wearing it and hope to get more people wearing it. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, um, UK rappers have helped like with the journey as well and getting it out of there. Yeah, I mean, when, like, if I, for example, like, uh, JK um, put us up on his story, waving my hand around. <laughs> uh, JK put us up on his story and he shouted it out, and we got a f like about 300 followers from that. So you have to think. This is how I think with with stuff like that. So even if it's not a rapper, but someone wears the product, they're a walking billboard. So if Someone, if someone wears it and 10 people see them, that's 10 new people that don't know about Hoodrich that could potentially now know about it and be interested, you know what I mean? So I always, I always think beyond just the, that one person wearing it because I know that there's a much bigger picture. So it's just about understanding that. So yeah. From August, September 2014 is when I started the brand. And then last August is when I hit three years. And I kind of just, it hit me. I was, um, I was running the business with my head down. I was just, I wasn't, I didn't make any strategical moves or anything like that. So I was doing like a free year review and I was looking at brands that had started kind of after me, before me. And I was looking at where they were. And I noticed that some of them were in positions that I'd like to be in. So I had to ask myself, like i was like jay why why are you not where you want to be and it was a number of things so when i said last august i kind of had to pattern up what i did was i just changed my mindset and instead of being like a hundred percent on it i was 120 percent. i became more focused i dedicated time to learn things um that were going to benefit the brand in the future i also fell in love with the process and stopped wanting things and i i, I had to learn patience and i started to understand the importance of the process and i feel like i needed that to happen and as a result of me like developing my mind and just learning new things that's why i'm that's why i'm able to be in the position that i am in you know a year later like i've now got business partners a team i'm just about to go into foot asylum so what i say to myself is imagine if i would have been that focused when i first started the brand who knows where i would have been now so now it's important that i never lose focus again and I always just remember that it's a marathon, not a sprint. And just stay in focus, man. Like, I'm so passionate about Hoodrich and 
I'm so clear on my vision. I know exactly, I know not even where I want it to be, where it's going to be in the future. So, yeah, man, I'm just, I'm on a never ending staircase and I'm just gonna keep climbing. And that's just the reality of it, man. That's just as real as it gets. I had, um, I had doubters. I had people say, oh, I've had a lot of things. I've had people say, oh, hood rich, like the word hood is negative. Um, hood rich won't work in stores. Um, people won't stock it. It's not really gonna last long. Or are you still doing the clothing thing? Do you know what I mean? But when you've got a belief so strong and you know exactly where you want to be, like anything that anyone says, you just, you just kind of, it doesn't even affect your vision. You just have to believe in where you're going and just make sure you stay focused and with that you can't go wrong and also in the industry i mean you need to be mentally tough do you know what i mean you can't because people are gonna it's like anything people are gonna criticize stuff i've showed people collections or whatever they're like oh, i like this i like this i like but i don't like that so i've had to come to terms with the fact that you can't please everyone once i understood that um it made everything made more sense and um i was just able to push forward no matter if people doubted me do you know what i mean it's also fuel i use doubt to fuel so secretly i can be like all right cool yeah man i'm not i'm never the type of person to turn around to someone and say oh yeah you doubted me but look where i am now it's just for me personally i can say it to myself okay they doubted me i used it as fuel now look where i am and just keep pushing on that way um do you know what one of the biggest obstacles for me getting a good manufacturer definitely because i'm a street i'm a streetwear brand and i come from being into streetwear clothes so i know the level that i want my clothing to be at and again it, it's back to like the process you have to go through the stage of cutting out uh, labels and guild and tees um cutting that rebranding shorts you can't just start at the um top do you know what i mean you have to get stuck in jump in the deep end and figure it out and if you stick at that part long enough the right people will come and come knocking on the door and since then i've had like um inquiries from manufacturers saying oh we'd like to make clothes do you know what i mean so two two three years ago i wouldn't have like i wouldn't have, i was hoping for that man i was like oh, i need a good manufacturer we have to trust the process man and keep going it will come it will, everything will happen everything will fall into place as long as you just working hard is cliche but as long as you stick to your vision and what you believe in and you have to have a positive mindset you have to already kind of be where you want to be even though you're not there yet so yeah do you know what the biggest highlight's gonna be me putting in three and a half years of work and then getting approached by foot asylum because they're a big retailer and it's just i'm excited at the fact that it's going to bridge the gap so i'm able to still make the like urban streetwear that i love it's just now being accepted by um a big retailer so for me uh that's one of the biggest highlights simply because i know the effect that's going to have on the brand and i know what it's going to do for the brand moving forward so yeah that has to be the biggest highlight um, and then there's no seats in the air grinder so when you're ready to go to the toilet you can go and see what I'm doing yeah I'm just going to okay yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah. And I'm just going to take some pictures. So if you can stand in front of this. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. It's probably best yeah. to get in. I'm going to ask that. Yeah, guys, yeah. stay there. Yeah. You block them. Yeah, quite <laughs> 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 We're looking at, we'll look at Ellis. I'm a granddad. Ellis, look at Ellis. Oh, lovely. And then at these guys. Videoing. This is my great granddad. Ye
came to England on a boat in what year, Grandad? Jeez. 55. 1955. Yeah, man. So um, I've learned a lot from my granddad's stories, man. And he's just one of the reasons that um, I stay motivated and just keep pushing. You know what I mean? So I was I'm right. Windrush. Yeah, Windrush. So yeah, man. Trouble. Original. Yeah. Original. Yeah, Brilliant. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's so much, man. I've got. I think I'm gonna have to do a separate video on this. But yeah, like really quickly. Um, don't listen to people that say the market's saturated. Do you know what I mean? Um, imagine if I would have listened to people saying, oh, "Don't do clothing." This X, Y, and Z. They've got a brand. They're already big. No one's gonna buy your clothes. So get that out. Get that out of your head. You have to think positively. You have to be creative. You have to go the extra mile. Um, I think if you gear yourself up for always going the extra mile, when difficult tasks pop up, you're able to deal with them better and, and cope with them. And um, I would also say that you need a team. If you want to take it big, if you want to like really go far you definitely need a team um but yeah i would say get stuck in do your research and don't put procrastinate too much just go for it man definitely i feel like you're not at a disadvantage if you're from birmingham but i feel like if you want to take whatever you're doing in the creative industry to the next level i definitely feel like you need to not that you need to, but you will benefit from uh, networking with people in London. I think that, um, I think there's no denying that when people from all over the world, if you say to someone who's from America, you mention the UK, they know about London. Do you know what I mean? So there's no denying that London is, it's the next level, isn't it? It's like, it's the Premier League. So yeah, man, yeah, you gotta, you gotta network and expand. Why not? Do you know what I mean? Saying that though, the Brum scene is on the rise and it's nice and healthy. So it's not about like just moving off to London and forgetting where you've come from. It's about networking there, but still you know that you're established from here and you always um, represent Brum. Otherwise we won't rise as a city, do you know what I mean? So yeah, man, and I think there's a lot of talent now coming out of Brum, which is helping us all. So exciting times no way um like not a lot of people know this and i've actually i'm gonna tell you guys this a bit well you i don't know if i've spoke to you about it but i'm gonna do a post about it like later on just before um i go into for asylum but i used to work in iceland when i was 16 to for two and a half years when i worked there it made me realize that i want to live life on my own terms and I don't want to work for somebody else so I don't even class myself as an entrepreneur that's just because I yeah but anyway now nah, man I fell in love with the process and I would always I value time more do you know what I mean I think if you work a nine to five nothing wrong with that at all because at the end of the day you can do that and you can come home and work on your dreams but for me now like to go back to that it'd be i'd be disappointed you know what i mean because i know i've got a lot more to give so yeah man. i've recently gone full time with hoodrich because of what's going on so yeah i've been able to like live off like what i've earned from hoodrich and stuff in the past i've also had like a part-time job not doing a lot of hours do you know what i mean just but that's more like family business so i don't really class it as a job but yeah hoodrich has been has carried me through man so now i'm actually full-time on it though um so there's no looking back now do you know what i mean i've just gotta go for it only live once do you know what i mean i'm only gonna have i'm only gonna get older and just have regret so i understand that now so instead of getting older and having the regret that I didn't 
freely give it everything. I've got to do it now, do you know what I mean? I have to, I've got no um, plan B, man. This is all I've got, like, I tell this to everyone. This is why it means so much to me. So it's kind of like, I don't have any other options. This actually has to work, man. Like, it's that real, man. Like, I could go on about it a lot, but, um, yeah, and I say it, but my actions, like, back up what I'm saying, do you know what I mean? I put in a lot of work, I, it's, it's all I do, man, do you know what I mean? So, yeah, man, gotta get to the, gotta get to the top, man, gotta get to the top. I'm already past the foot asylum, you know, simply because I believe in not getting comfortable, so again, like, this is just how I am, so, this is a quote that sums me up, proud, but never satisfied, so, the foot asylum deal, I'm, like, I'm happy, but the show's gotta go on, do you know what I mean, I'm not gonna be like, ah, oh, foot asylum, and then just, and then just relax and just chill out, it's, it's more like, okay, foot asylum, boom, that's in the back pocket now, what's next, so, I can't really say too much, but there might, there might be other retailers that we're going to go into. Obviously, we're going to expand that website. And then worldwide, man. Big wide world out there. I say it all the time. Millions of people. So I'm not going to limit myself. And I've said it previously, never ending staircase. So it's just a case of I'm always going to be climbing a staircase, but I'm going to be enjoying myself as well because I love what I do so it doesn't seem like work so I don't mind doing it yeah, and all I have to, yeah there's been times where I've wanted to like ah oh, this is long I've wanted to quit but all I have to do is just go to sleep wake up and I'm right back on it man you get me but I think everyone who's creative or is running their own company business goes through that when something doesn't go your way and it's just about understanding um, that's why after three years I changed my mindset so when I did come across difficult objects I've got a tough mindset to be able to like deal with that disappointment and now I actually I embrace failure because I know I'm gonna learn from it so like actually how I think is I don't mind failing I want to fail because then I'll be I'll have more knowledge and I'll be able to because I know I'm gonna get through it I have more knowledge it's going to make the company a lot better my knowledge is going to be better do you know what i mean knowledge is power so that's been kind of like one thing that i've embraced from the start just get stuck in man it doesn't matter if you fail like you can get through it you're going to learn so yeah man and i just think that learning is key i'm forever a student like i'll always be a student i'll never ever think that yeah I know it all or, or that like more can't be done so probably like look back at this in like 20 years and I'll still be like man I need to we gotta do this we gotta do that but I think it's just when you when you're like so passionate about something and you're all in I just think that's what comes with it man and you gotta you just that's just it that's just the reality so I'm a, like, because the vision's so big, it's like I'm proud but never satisfied, you know what I mean? And I just can't, I don't know, man, I can't help that. That's just how I am. So it's like, yeah, yeah, this is cool. I said to Luke, like, this is cool, do you know what I mean? But it's like, yo, we got to always keep it moving and just what's next. So, yeah. But, yeah, man, sick. I'm going to get some photos and... off topic like i don't know you lot probably won't put this in there but you can just save it i want to big up you guys man because um i think that what you're doing is good man uh not good i think it's great and i think that the three of you work really well like i've known you for some time in it now and i just like the energies that you've got the work ethic and i don't ever want you to i know you won't quit but i just want you to all fall in love with the process and just know that it's coming bigger things are gonna happen man 100% like it's just destined like like the energies how you like work together man I can just tell that you're a tight unit man and in business that's hard to find 
Do you know what I mean? People like take it for granted, so just always remember that. And I think if you all have the same like um, like morals and values, Crown Media can only go like that. Do you know what I mean? And if other people can get a million subscribers, then you can, and if you think like that, you'll do it. But yeah, man, that's it. Just big up Crown, man. I got a lot of love for you, man. Still, so I just wanted to say that, and it, and that's it, man. That's a wrap. I don't know if you're going to use it, but, you know, like that, I just, <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, man. Proper, proper. Was that okay, though, yeah? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Respect.